Dennis is a talented architect. He's designed a unique skyscraper, and right now, the construction works are starting. His boss asked Dennis to show around a group of specialists from a competitor company. The only condition was that they weren't allowed to take any photos. Dennis did as he was told, but when the group was going to leave, he asked security to detain one man. The architect claimed he had been taking photos during the tour around the site. How did he understand it? The man was carrying an umbrella. He kept pointing it at different objects, asking lots of questions. But the sky is cloudless. What does he need an umbrella for? A camera must be hidden there. Nathan came to his friend Zachary, who worked in a museum. Look what I've got! A priceless manuscript that was written more than a thousand years ago! Zachary looked through the manuscript and realized his friend had been fooled. Does anything in this text strike you as strange? If we talk about the dates before the Common Era, they should be in reverse order. The original text would read, King Alfred V ruled the country from 1320 to 1290 BCE. Detective Aaron Jones got a call late at night. It was his neighbor. I've heard a very loud noise coming from the house next door. I'm afraid to go there to investigate alone, but what if something has happened? When Aaron and his neighbor arrived at the place, they saw the entrance door open. They ran inside and found the house owner, Mr. Anderson, on the floor of his bedroom, tied and moaning in pain. He said he had been in bed reading a book. And then, a man in a black mask broke into his room and hit him on the head. Then he tied Mr. Anderson, took all his money and other valuables, and disappeared. Detective Jones didn't believe the man. Why? Look at his bed. There isn't even a wrinkle on the cover. It's unlikely that the thief made the bed after tying Mr. Anderson, which means the man is lying. Look at this group of people and try to figure out who the man's wife is. It's the woman in purple. Both she and the biker are wearing matching wedding rings. Joan took part in an experiment, testing her logical thinking and analytical skills. She had to crack riddles to get to the next level. Right now, the girl is locked in a small room. The door will open automatically once she figures out the riddle written on a piece of paper. Which principle is this sequence based on? 8549176320 The numbers are lined up based on the alphabetical order of the first and second letters of their name. 8, 5, 4, 9, and so on. Joan managed to get out of the room and is ready for the next task. This time, the girl needs to join all the blue points on the screen. But she's allowed to use only three lines. How can she do it? She's drawn a triangle. Its three sides include all the dots. The next level is rather scary. Joan is locked in a room that's slowly filling with water. This process will only stop when the girl figures out how this equation can be true. 29 minus 1 equals 30. Even under these stressful conditions, Joan managed to crack the puzzle. She replaced the numbers with the Roman numerals XXIX minus I equals XXX. Then she removed the one I from 29 XXIX and got 30 XXX. Wow, this was a riddle with a lot of excess. And finally, Joan is given the last test. She needs to figure out which object is the odd one and doesn't belong to the group. Can you do the same? It's the first object. It's the only one that doesn't have any individual traits. The second object is uniquely round. The third doesn't have a red line around it. 
The fourth shape is a different color, and the fifth one is smaller than the rest. Two cars are driving through the city. They both started their journey at the same time. The green one is moving at a speed of 30 miles per hour. The yellow one is faster, its speed is 50 miles per hour. And still, at one point, the green car comes across the yellow car. How is it possible? Well, the cars were traveling in opposite directions. Look at this teenager and two women behind his back. Who is his real teacher? The answer is in the reflection behind their backs. You can see that both women are holding pointers. But in the mirror, only one of them has it. She is the real teacher. Two men are going to fill their watering cans with water from the river. Who will bring more water? The spout of the older man's watering can is situated lower than the spout of the other man's can. And the level of water can't be higher than the spout. It means the younger man will bring more water. Evelyn wants to visit one unusual restaurant. But to get there, one must know the password. The girl hides around the corner to figure it out. She sees a man come up to the security guard. The guard says, 12. The man answers, 6, and is allowed to come in. Then a young woman approaches the security guard. He says, 6, and she answers, 3. Evelyn is sure she has figured out the pattern. She comes up to the security guard and hears him say, 4. The girl says, 2, and isn't allowed to enter. Why? The password is always different. It's the number of letters in the word the security guard says. Like the word 12 has 6 letters. That's why Evelyn should have answered 4. A manager of the most luxurious sea resort in the area called the police. She said someone had stolen a set of very expensive monogrammed bed linen. Three guests left the hotel that morning. Mr. Sam Taylor, Mrs. Amanda Martin, and Mr. Michael Smith. The police detained one of the guests and, indeed, found the bed linen in their suitcase. How did the detectives figure out which person was the thief? As you can see, the hotel's name is Morning Star. This means the monogram on the bed linen was MS. The only person with the same initials is Mr. Michael Smith. Hannah called her friend, Detective Evelyn Marks, and asked her to come as soon as possible. While the woman was away walking with her dog, someone had gotten into her house and stolen her laptop. Hannah was sure it was her neighbor, Jeremy. Evelyn went to question the man, but he wasn't at home. She decided to wait for him in her car. Soon, she saw Jeremy opening his entrance door. I went fishing early in the morning. Don't you see that I've just come home? But Hannah didn't believe Jeremy and took him to the police station. Why? The guy was wearing white sneakers, but it's been raining since early morning. If he was out fishing, how can his shoes look so clean? Detective Jacob Robinson was spending his vacation in the mountains. One morning, he found out someone had stolen a big sum of money from the owner of the hotel where he was staying. Jacob offered the man his help and questioned all the hotel guests. Emma said, I felt unwell and spent all the evening in my room. Lewis explained to the detective that he had only arrived at 2 a.m. and had gone straight to bed. And Simon said, I've got friends living here in the village. I went to visit them and returned in the morning just an hour ago. Detective Robinson immediately realized who was guilty. Do you know it? It was Simon. Look at the snow around the hotel. It looks untouched with no footprints whatsoever. Then how did Simon get back from the village? Mrs. Williamson told her daughter Maya she wasn't allowed to see her boyfriend Luke until she prepared for her exam. After that, the woman went shopping. 
When she was coming back, she spotted Luke, who was walking along the street. When Mrs. Williamson returned home, she immediately realized Maya had seen her boyfriend. How did the woman figure it out? When she was leaving, there were five roses in the vase on the kitchen table. Now, there were only four. And when she saw Luke, he was carrying a rose. Private Detective Sean was waiting for his client in the lobby of a large hotel. The client was running very late. That's why, to entertain himself, Sean was observing the hotel guests. He noticed a man at the reception desk. He had four suitcases, but refused when the porter offered to help him with the baggage. The man went to his room, only to reappear five minutes later with the largest of his suitcases. Half an hour later, he returned without the suitcase and went to his room. Soon, he rushed to the reception shouting, My suitcases! They're gone! Sean introduced himself and, together with the hotel management, joined the man in his room. Something seemed off about the guy, and soon, the detective realized he was a fraudster. What did the man do? Each of the suitcases was smaller than the previous one. The man packed all of them into the largest suitcase and left with it. And then, he pretended someone had stolen his things. Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. But there are hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there. All of them were covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It's the man in the middle. He doesn't have a medical chart next to his bed. Oh boy, William got inside a cave during an archaeological expedition. There were three ways out, however, only one of them was safe. His map said that behind the first way out, there was a pond that swallowed everything in. The second way out led to dangerous dinosaurs that would eat him alive. The third way out led to an erupting volcano. Which way was safe? The second one, because the dinosaurs went extinct many years ago. You're running away from a pack of zombies and come across three doors. Behind the first one, there's raging fire. Behind the second one, there's a lake of water. Behind the third one, there's a venomous snake. Which way would you choose? I'd recommend to choose the second one and swim away. It's just a lake. You can do it. During his vacation in the jungles, Aiden was caught by some tribe. They tied him up and said they'd push him into one of the three pits of his choice. The first pit was filled with zombies. The second one, there was raging fire. The third one was filled with huge pitcher plants. Which pit should Aiden pick? He should choose the third one. The pitcher plants only eat insects. They're not dangerous for people. Aston reported that someone had robbed his house. Detective Callum arrived and asked Aston to tell him what happened. He said that he walked into his room and saw someone getting out of his window. They must have heard him walking inside the house. Then he checked his desk and found that his money had been stolen. Detective Callum asked if Aston had touched anything else, and the man said he hadn't. Detective Callum closed the case and refused to proceed. Can you guess why? The robber wouldn't get out of the window without stepping on the bed. However, the bed was perfectly made, and Aston said he hadn't touched it. It means there was no robber. Waverly was an archaeologist looking for a pirate treasure. In one of the caves on a deserted island, she finally found it. There were three chests, and one of them was filled with gold and gems. However, if she picked one of the wrong chests, terrible things would happen to her. Luckily, there were statements on each of them, but only one of these statements was true. 1. The treasure is in this chest. 
2. The treasure isn't in this chest. 3. The treasure isn't in chest number 1. Which of the chests has the treasure? Let's solve it step by step. If the first statement is true, then the treasure must be in the first chest, and the other statements must be false. In this case, the second statement is also correct, so that was a wrong guess. If the second statement is true, then the treasure isn't in the first chest. The treasure isn't in the second chest either, just like it says. Then it must be in the third one. However, this makes the third statement correct too, although it shouldn't be. If the third statement is true, then from the first statement that is wrong, you can conclude that there's no treasure in the first chest. Since the second one is wrong too, then the treasure must be there. Now there's no contradictions, and the treasure is in the second chest. Whew. Does anybody else have chest pains? Just me? Okay. Skylar and Amelia are pen pals. Skylar said that her birthday was in winter, and Amelia said that hers is in summer. However, a couple of months later, they both had their birthday on the same day. Still, none of them lied. How is it possible? They live in different hemispheres. When it's wintertime in the US, it's summer in Australia, and vice versa. Mrs. Fitz came back from work and found that her favorite cup was broken. She asked her daughters who had done it. Katie said, it wasn't me. Serena said, it wasn't me either. Hannah said, it was Serena. Mrs. Fitz knew her daughters well, and she could tell what happened. Only one of the girls was telling the truth. Can you guess who broke the cup? If Katie tells the truth, then firstly, it wasn't her who broke the cup. Secondly, the other two girls are lying. Serena is lying, so you can conclude it was her. But then Hannah is right, and that's a contradiction. Let's say Hannah is right. Then it was Serena who broke the cup, and Serena is lying. But then Katie is telling the truth too, when she says it wasn't her. So Serena is telling the truth. She says it wasn't her, so you can trust her. And Katie and Hannah are lying. Katie says it wasn't her, so it was her. And Hannah says it's Serena, which is a lie. So Serena is the honest girl, and Katie is the guilty one. Hannah is just a liar. Esme was on her casual walk in the forest, and she didn't get lost this time. Here it was, her way home. But the other one was away to the witch's house. After a bit of thinking, Esme decided she had to say hi to her old friends and visit the witch. The witch said she didn't have a riddle for her that day, and Esme was free to go. But Esme had one. She said if the witch got it wrong, Esme would take her cat. Dear witch, imagine you're in a dark room. How can you get out? She mustn't imagine that. Spoiler, the witch got it and kept the cat. Next time, Esme. A police officer was walking in a neighborhood and stopped one gentleman. He asked him what the man was doing, and he said that he had just left his house to go to the grocery store. However, the officer didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? Look, it's snowing, and there are fresh footprints on the snow that lead out of the window. House owners usually use the front door to walk out of the house, so this one must be a burglar. Bryce was a grumpy old gentleman who didn't like some teenagers walking past his house. So once, he decided to report them so they'd never be allowed to get close to him anymore. He called the authorities and told them that he was having tea on his terrace, and those teenagers threw a baseball at him. Luckily, the baseball flew above him. However, the detective didn't believe it had happened at all. Why? Take a look at the terrace. It's all made of glass. Bryce's place is right next to a window. If the baseball had flown right above him, as he said, it would have broken the glass. Thomas was collecting action figures. Some of them he got from his grandfather. 
They were super rare, and his collection of more than 500 figures was worth about a million dollars. One day, he came home from vacation and found out that his collection was stolen. Detective Callum was up for the case. There were three suspects, all of them were Thomas's neighbors. He said that the collection of action figures had been stolen and asked what they had been doing during the holidays. Sydney said that she was in the neighborhood. She was working, but had nothing to do with the figures. Mateo said that his grandma is staying with him, so he's always with her, and he couldn't find any room for 500 action figures at his place. Gideon said that he wasn't even in the neighborhood and had just come back himself. Who stole the collection? Mateo. No one mentioned how many figures there were in the collection, but he knew somehow. Samantha, a rich woman, found out that someone had stolen the money from her wallet. There were three people in the house, Malcolm, a cleaning man, Grace, a gardener, and Sebastian, a boy who walks her dog. She reported the case. The police took the fingerprints but only found those of Samantha herself. Still, they had the main suspect. Who was it? The main suspect was the cleaning man, Malcolm. He's wearing gloves, and that's why he was able to do it without leaving any fingerprints. Annabelle didn't want to go to school, so in the morning, she went downstairs and told her mom that she wasn't feeling well. She said that she had eaten a bit of apple last night, and it must have been poisoned because she had been feeling unwell all night. However, Mrs. Collins didn't believe her and sent Annabelle to school. Why? There's just one bite on the apple, and it's a fresh one. If Annabelle had left this bite last night, it'd be brown. But it was still okay, which meant it was fresh. At school, Sophie opened her locker and found an envelope. Inside, there was a calendar and a note asking if she wanted to go to the prom. However, instead of the name, there were just several numbers. 17, 2, 30, 25. Can you guess who asked Sophie to prom? The calendar is the key. You just have to find all the numbers and see what name the first letters of the respective months give you. So, 17 is circled in August, so it's A. Number 2 is in December, which gives us D. Number 30 is in April, so A again. And finally, number 25 is May 25, so it's May. Seems like the guy's name is Adam. Too bad there are 13 Adams at her school. Elsie walked into a party store to buy something. She learned that 1 costs $1, 17 costs $2, and 103 costs $3. She needed 22. What do you think she's buying and how much should you pay? She's probably buying birthday candles for a cake, so each candle costs $1. She needs 22, which is 2 candles, so she'll have to spend $2.